tell me if we if we can see my screen on youtube yeah pradeep we are live now you can start your session yeah you can go on mute yeah hello everyone pradeep here i hope everyone doing great and thanks for joining and also have we have few colleagues also they will they are happy to answer or solve your queries please do drop your questions in chat window they will pick it up okay so without a further ado let's start so today we are going to learn about rf framework and do a simple case study i will keep i will keep it simple and short so let's start by creating an rf framework so let it be same name so the description quit so what is ari framework guys it's just a template with inbuilt functions that's it so we will go through each states and transitions and i will explain over we i'll give you overview okay so let's click on open the import so yeah as you can see let me zoom out a little bit yeah so as you can see there are four states initialization get transaction data and process transaction and end process so this is a state machine template which you can get it from here simple as that so now you can see this is these are states we have states there are only two states states and final states so these initialization get transaction and process transaction are states and the end process is final state you cannot connect final state from final state to another state okay so this is a uh, complete so as you can see this is start now there are only two states as i said state and final state these are called transition lines so initialization where we initialize all the applications like reading and reading or opening any web applications and if there is any system exception within this block it will directly end the process if there if there is no system exception everything goes good it will go to directly to get transaction data and in the get transaction data we will fetch all the details from queue or else based on our required based on our requirement we will use anything if there is no data it will directly go to the end process if there is data to trans data to process it will go to transaction as you can see from transaction we are going with three transaction lines which are the first one is system exception if there is any system exception system exception within this block it will start from initialization and if there is any business exception on success it will start from get transaction data by getting a new data so we'll start with initialization before that we are going to open config file So, so let's open the initialization so what you can see is just a try catch and entry and exit so what you can you have you have idea about try catch so if we are we are trying something here if there is any exception within this block it will catch the exception and as in the system exception has this exception so now what is here so in the first assign block you can see we are assigning system exception as nothing that is common 
and the next process we are using if condition and defining as config is nothing so when we are running for the first time config you can see config is a dictionary variable as a system and object string and object so when we are running for the first time it will go through these conditions if it is empty it will add all I mean, it will go through this branch and extract all the details and we have values in config i mean in dictionary so when we are running for the next time we should be can i mean if we can go through here else part so consider we are going for the first time so it will come back in then part you can see we are using a invoke workflow in it all settings so we you can also directly go from here in it all setting or you can just directly open it before that we we'll see what all the arguments we are using so in config file thing but our config file which i already shown you this one and in config sheets are settings and constants settings and constants so this is a out config file so let's see what is inside now to want the whatever we declared it initially we are just initializing with the with the syntax now we are using a for each sheet in config sheet see nothing but our settings and constant in config file so we are reading a config file so in config file is nothing but our file path so sheets is nothing but array of config sheets so when we are doing for the first loop we will be having sheet as settings and out there we are getting a data table as settings and constants you can minimize that Now settings and constant we are just passing it here and right now checking an if condition within the for each loop nothing but so row of name dot to string dot trim it's nothing but so we are just checking this loop this row in mean this column if it is null or empty as you can see from the condition is null or white space sorry what is the what does it mean if when we are looping consider we are we are in the first loop first row so this it has something so it will pick here if it is if in this row we have some empty row so it is going to ignore and then come back then take this value because it has something that is it so if that is matches So we're just adding key out config row of name dot to string. So nothing but orchestrator queue. I'll just open a more topic. Orchestrator queue is equal to is equal to row of value. Row of value is nothing but second column process A B C Q. Is equal to process A B C Q. This loop. It will loop all the rows and add it to a config of a dictionary. So this then again it will go back and fetch the constant sheets and do the same. So let's close this, minimize this. Now, now the same but different asset sheet. So we are reading the same config file. We are using the asset sheet name. and getting a data table type of data table and assets we are just passing it here so we are just looping it raw of asset nothing but this value so whatever we are clear here for example image email credentials we can use this 
add it here and get the assets value from office data and assigning so row of name dot to string nothing but you can add so this is nothing but in my quad is equal to credentials from orchestrator it is just going like this so that we you can use it later with calling a clean config config of so whatever you are declaring is here is your key gmail underscore quest you do this you will get value of credential gmail credential from orchestrator So now we have a try catch here. If there is any exception within this block, like fetching try assets, assets from orchestrator, it will catch the exception here saying loading updates failed logging it. So this is it. So we are going to minimize everything. So if there is any, let's say any error within the, this block, it will catch no assets defined in the process. So we'll come back to save this. That's so this is done. This is what is taking is same. If if you declare orchestrator queue name, so this is an argument. We can just check it here, it will overwrite your value. If you declare it already in config field, then it will assign to the same as config. Next. This is the Ingo kill workflow, kill process workflow. So consider you are opening an uh, hack me a website. So any website, you just before time before running it, you just make sure you kill all the process, all the applications, any everything in in this block. So it runs smoothly. So this is just nothing but adding a blocks in the orchestrator i hope you guys understood this this block first one i'm just minimizing this and it all applications let's see what are all the arguments we have in here just a config config fill with all the keys and values so now you can make use of config just to open or initialize or do whatever you want in this. Just uh, declare any opening application like open uh, start process, open browser, anything as per your requirements. Now, so from end to end, in this try catch, in this try part is done. If there is any exception, any system exception occurred here, it will directly catch it here and assign. We already created, just wanted to show you. So we have, we have uh, variables predefined like transaction item system, business transaction config. You can see system exception and business exception already, already defined. If there is any exception within this block, it will catch directly here in system exception and assign system exception as an exception. So, what happens if there is any system exception? Let's see that. If there is any system exception, you directly go to the end process. How it happens? Let's check that. So you can see there are two conditions defined here. Trigger, I mean, let's check that. If system exception is nothing, if system exception is nothing, like if everything goes well in the initialization part block, it will directly go to the get transaction data and it will continue, continue the process. If, if system exception is, is not nothing, that means, if you have, if you've got any exception within the block, it will fail and it will continue to check this condition. 
if system exception is not nothing it will log it will come to the action block system exception at initialization it will log it here and directly go to the end process in end process you can see you can use a close all applications and close all the applications yeah so if there is any system exception occurs between this block it will directly go to the end process if there is any success like everything goes good it directly go to get transaction data now let's see this part if you are if you guys have any question within this block please do drop a comment and i will try to answer let me know guys yeah so in get transaction data if now everything goes good we'll come we'll land it here when i open this you can see this same with retrieve data flow check stop signal what is check stop signal if you if you or anyone stops the process from orchestrator if you are using orchestrator if the if, if someone presses stop it will become a true it is a boolean you can see should stop is a boolean if it is become a true it will come here come to then part it will log it and assign transaction item is nothing what happens if if they assign transaction item as a nothing let's check that you can see there are two condition defined here if transaction item item is not nothing so we are going to process it if transaction item is nothing it will it will say process finished due to no more transaction data and will directly go to the end process it so let's come back here if so no one so no one stops the job in orchestrator it will come back come here to else part we have another invoke workflow within the try block so you can see the arguments here in transaction number config out transaction number field 1 field 2 id and data if you are using a queue so so we are in the get transaction block workflow if you are using a queue you can just fetch details from queue name just uh, having a queue name and getting a out transaction item the transaction data out transaction item is not nothing if this out transaction item has some value it will come here you can just modify the code here to get for example i'll just try here if our transaction item you can assign else you can easily use it in process i'll show you in the in the next slide So if you are not using a queues, you can just use any other methods like reading an Excel or defining condition within this block. So if there is any error occurs within this block, like system exception, so we are just it will come catch it here. So again, it will assign transaction item is equal to nothing. So if you know transaction transaction item is nothing, then it will directly go to the end process if you have transaction item as some value it will go to process transaction so let's see that so we will be landing here if we have any data to process yeah so as you can see again the try catch block nothing else 
try catch this is a try block and the catch block business exception assigning business exception as equal to exception and same now so we are just initializing business exception is equal to nothing and we are calling a process xaml file using invoke process we will just see in transaction item is equal to queue item so which we have declared in get transaction data and we are using a config now open this workflow if you want to build any business process business flow you can directly here write it here if there is any business ex exception or system exception within this flow it will catch it here and assign business exception system exception once this is done it will directly go to the final state here what happens is if you are using a queue or a yeah, queue and a retry mechanism everything happens here so let's see that so again we can see there are config transaction item return number transaction number field one field two id system exception business exception open the workflow again so when so when these system exception in try catch and assign the same here or here it will come to the final state and open and will we'll start from here so start it is checking as you can see if in business exception is nothing and system exception is nothing if it is true we will declare a success here what's happening here you can see in if transaction item is not nothing does it mean like it means if transaction item has some value and also in transaction item dot get type so as of now we have in transaction data type is q if in transaction item get type is q item is matching the ui part dot call dot q item then it will come here it will change the transaction status is equal to success you can change it here if you are accordingly and log it on the orchestrator level so this is the success part now it will come here it will increment the in transaction number plus one and return number is equal to zero if anything any one of these has some exception it will come here then it will check if business exception is uh, if you have any business exception it will come to your system exception will come to your basically business exception and success are same you can see same condition update the just with the failed the transaction item status will be failed and the same thing logging now we're going to see the system exception part same condition to check if uh, if you have any uh, transaction item value and data type value this is equal to failed transaction item retry number you know as this now we'll take a screenshot here of system exception and the send if if you want you can use make use of to send your email if there's change any system exception occurs and the next part is close all applications so what happening what's happening here is if we get any system exception we need to restart from i mean start from beginning so whatever you declared in the end process the same flow is available here in a set transaction status you can make use of the flow and it will close all the all the flow and it will start from again so this is a transaction status let me minimize this close this
yeah so as i told closer from if there is any success you will go to the get transaction data to fetch new data new data if business exception same if there is a system exception we will close all the applications which are open and we will start again and do the same process that's it guys if you have any questions please do drop in the chat window i will try to answer it so divya so the next next person will be taking care of now divya shri please go ahead thank you so much for the wonderful session on the ari prema pradi uh i think i'm not seeing any questions so far with respect to the re framework in the chat so i think we can just go ahead and, and start on the abi so okay so let's start abi flexi capture so why abi flexi capture and we have now in the market we have lot of ocr components and we have so many products which which is giving ocr results but why abi flexi capture is always standing out of the crowd is because in all the ocr components which are coming in the market so far and whatever it already we do have in the market they need a wrapper basically so whenever you are giving an input any of the image or any of the pdf or any scanned copies it is just going to give us all the available values in the whole input file either in the json format or in the text format or any other format but basically at the end of the day we need to generate the graphics to expect whatever the data which we want that's where the api flexi capture is standing out of the crowd it is not you are you are going to extract the data what is there in the input file it is there it's like we are going to extract the data just what we want from that whole file that's where the api flexi capture come into an existence so yeah why api so as i mentioned the extraction what we want is not what's there in the document it is just what we want for that particular process or whatever i want to extract from that specific document and definitely we do not need any of the wrapper for any of the structure we already have a well defined structures we just have to go ahead and add the components and the elements which we want to extract and any and components associated from starting from the extraction until the data push to any of the destination uh this is nothing but we do have so many components in the abi flexi capture as a whole product like flexi capture studio and then designing documents and then verification station administration station and once we are done we are going we do have the image processing station and then licensing processing and once we are done with all these things the data will be pushed to the destination by automatically so the abi product can be used as a 100% automation tool so there is no need of human intervention if the quality of the samples is very good and we have handled all the validation which needs to be having then there is no need of a single human intervention so this is very fit for 100% automation and yeah definitely uh, icr feature which is there in the abi flexi capture we know why are we going to use icr is to extract the handwritten values i'm not saying like you whatever you give like even the cursive handwriting which the person has written in the document will be scanned and it will going to get the 100% result but whatever the icr feature which you have in the api flexi capture along with the ocr is giving us the best results when it compares to the other ocr engines in the market and at least i can get at least person at least 80% of the accuracy of the scanned copy when this when the copy has been scanned in more than 320 dpi so these are the things which we will be 
able to progress and to compromise with respect to the apoplex capture. So, these components which are provided from the apoplex capture, there you have the different stations and different components where web login module, web capture station, web scanning station, web data verification station, and administration and the monitoring console. All these components is going to come in the picture when we are using a cloud version of the Abbey, where I'll be able to web, log into the web module and monitoring which process has taken how many number of inputs and generated the reports with respect to that specific project. Along with that, what are all the projects which has been enabled for the hot folder and which are all the projects which is picking the files from the hot folder and how many number of project, pro pages has been processed per day, per week and per project. So all those can be monitored in the web login module. And in web capture station, there's a capture station where we will be able to train our input files, where I want to extract a couple of the values from the PDF or whatever the input file. If I need to add any of the extra values that can be captured in the capture station. And web scanning station, you have not scanned any images and you, you do have the hard copy of the file. And you want to scan that and extract the values. We do have the web scanning station where you just have to push your input files. So it's going to scan those things of the image pre-processing components like to have to it is not web. And remove all the watermarks. So those kind of image processing can be handled, and then we will be able to push the input file for the processing. And then we do have the web data verification station, where if if the accuracy of the file is not good and the confidence level is less than what we have said for that specific project, then it will come to the verification station, and any of the admin person can verify the data, and they can push that to the next uh, processing and just to correct if they want to correct and they want to make any changes with respect to the data which has been extracted from the abbey they can do it at this verification station level and then push the data to the database or the file or or excel or whatever it is and in administrating and monitoring console, again, here we will be able to monitor how many process, how many batches has been created. And in the batches, how many were successfully processed and how many went to the exception. So all this can be uh, configured in the web application. So this is the set of the web application. This is a set of the web application and we do have a separate components for the same actions as a standalone. So in the standalone, we do have the project setup station and verification stations as a stations and the tools as a flexi layout studio and the form designer. Well, we are starting with the project where it does not, for example, if I have an invoice, I do already have the template to extract the values from the invoices. But let's consider I have ex I have received one of the image or the PDF, which is organization specifics, like an acknowledgement or any of the documents, agreements, these things which will be a organization. So those has to be started from the scratch. And to start extraction from the scratch, we will be starting from the tools. Either we can use a form designer or we can use a Flexi Layout Studio. So as a developer, I would prefer to go with the Flexi Layout Studio. I, I, why? Because it is very flexible and it is very handy. And I can design the form and extract the values however I want in the whole document. So once I'm done with creation of of the template from the flexi layout so we, will be, we will be generating a dot fsp file and we just have to convert that dot fsp file into an afl file for which we will be using to create a document definition the document definition can be created in the project station by using the afl which is generated from the flexi layout studio 
And once I'm done with the creation of the document definition, and once we publish the project from the document definition, I'll get a FC dot. So now the FC dot, how I can use it in the UI path? There are multiple ways to use this components in the UI path. So two major parts or two, two major ways is like, okay, I'll just automate everything with respect to the automate uh, extraction in the app itself. I'm not going to use any of the FC dot or anything else. Uh, I'll just push the data either to the database SQL server or I'll just push the data to the Excel files. And then I'll be reading the data from the UI path, fetching the data from the database or from the Excel file. Or there is another way where I'm just going to generate the FC dot from the document definition. And I use that FC dot file in my UI path activities uh, as an input, to whatever the uh, components which we do have with respect to the Abbey. I'll be able to use this FC dot as an input for that and get all the data and do the verification in the UI path itself. And once we are done with generating the input files, uh, sorry, generating the document definition and the FC dot, then we, be, we will be able to process the projects. And how are we going to do this is, I'll be able to import the files from the hot folder, which can be configured, which I'll be showing later. And once it's done, and once we are able to set the Confidence level, if the confidence level of the output goes less than what we have set as an input, then it will go to the verification station. If not, it will just go to the application server directly. And of course, in the application server, then it is going to the processing server, where it is, where it is if there is any, Im any image enhancement which is needed and I have created the profile, in the Abbey, then it is just going to apply all those image processing and then process the documents. And definitely the license server, yes, we do, it requests the license. So per page, uh, the license will be adding for each and every page which we will be processing. So once we are done with updating all this data, then the data will be pushed as we have configured, whether it, it is a file storage or whether it is a processing stations or whether it is a SQL server. So these are the set of the components we do have as a whole package as a Flexi, Flexi Capture Studio, right? So, okay, let's create one simple template and see how we can export the data. Okay, um, I'll just start from the beginning. So if you just look at this, when, when, when you get any of the projects, you will be able to see your Plexi Capture Studio here. So you can start with Plexi Capture Studio. This will be your starting window when you're creating a Plexi layout project. So you can just open any of these things or if you want to create a new one, you, you will be able to create the new one as well. Okay. Capture Studio. Yes, so here I have an option to open the project or create any project. So if I want to go from the beginning, we have to create a project and I can just give this demo 2805. So this is how the project, the very beginning of the project looks like. And definitely there are a few things which we have to be configured at the project level before we start processing it. Which, what is the pre-recognition? Like we do have some languages which is processing, which is pro providing from the Abbey. So you have to languages, which will be more than one. You will be able to select any of these things. And then you'll be able to set more than one language and click on OK. It is going to apply all those languages for the process which we are for the project processing. In the advanced properties, we do have like how many number of inputs we will be able to expect. It. So we will be able to see all, all these components over here. So if you just look at this, I do have this uh typographic max or matrix printer and the typewriter and we do have this pre-recognition mode fast balance and thorough so definitely this is going to impact 
heart whatever they need to move they are going to choose when they are in the while in the sample this is a major role over here so if we do it as fast it is not like when we are using a very bad sample and when we are using a fast pre recognition board Now we can expect a less confidence level in the OCR level, and how this is going to differ from each other, we will be just saying in our upcoming sessions. And then I'll be just going back to my project properties. So when I know when I do have more than one one page in my project, I just have to click on allow multiple page document. And if I know the maximum number of project is constant, I can just give as it is. But if I'm not sure how many number of pages it's going to get, for example, in the invoices, I'm not sure how many number of line items I may I might get. And based on the number of line items, the pages will be always differing. So in that case, I can just give as I. There is nothing but the infinity. So we are going to take the infinite project. It is just going to pick how any number of pages which comes in between the header and the footer. So this is about the very starting pro pro project properties which we need to add. I'll just click on apply and OK. And I'm just going to you just have to add a one of the sample which you have to process it. And you can just double click on that. We'll be able to see the results over here. So there are others also many uh, uh, options I we do have in the Fancy Cap Studio. For example, if I just disable this. And whatever I'm able to see here as I identified, this is just a plain PDF. Now, before I'm going to extract, I have to check whether I'm getting a proper data having the OCR or not. How can I do this? So I do have this word recognition. So when I click on this word recognition, the app will going to give me all the results. So whenever there's a word, if you just click on that. It is going to return me what is the text which is written there, and then as as it is, I'll be able to see all of these things. If I want to see if if the whole page has has a lot of lines, and also I have to use these lines as a structured document, so I just have to click on these lines, and I'll be able to see the green color highlighted lines. So I can use these as a separators when I'm using the Flexida of Capture Studio. So this is about the introduction, and I do have the project. Uh, this is about the batches. You can just go ahead and create any number of batches, and you will be able to add multiple samples instead of one batch. So for now, I just created one batch, and instead of one batch, I do have one sample, and this is my sample. This is with respect to batch, and this is about. The flexi layout. This is the this is where we are going to create each and every component which is need to be extracted from the app of flexi capture. So for now, what I'm just going to do is like I'm just going to open one of the project where I just added the same uh, project just a couple of minutes before. Okay, just give me a minute. Yes. So this is a project, the same file which I have been uh, installed here. So if you just look at this, we do have the same search elements and the blocks. So what is the search elements and what is the block in the Flexi Layout Studio? So here, the search element is nothing but the components where I'll be extracting all the static elements and all the values and whatever it needs to be taken, even to define the relations and even to define the regions. That comes under the search elements, and definitely we will be having so many references also while we are extracting the data. But we just cannot move all the data which has been extracted as a references. I just need a couple of the data which needs to be which needs to be processed as a output. For example, here I don't want any of this invoice number, invoice date, or Date as a static text. I just want these values to be sent as an output, right? So that's where the blocks comes. So even if you have done an extraction for all the components and you have extracted everything in the 
flexi layout studio and you missed to create the blocks then you will not get any output at all so whatever you you want to see as an output you have to create those blocks so in this we do have the header and footer i think there are so many developers who got confused with the header and footer like misunderstood i would say uh, they they think like header is the starting of the product page and footer is the end of the page no that's not the correct it is just like header is going to identify the first page and footer is going to identify the last page but if you define the footer in the last page whenever if, if there is something in the header and it is unique at the last page of the document even if you take that as a footer whatever the text which is there below of that will also be able to extract just to demonstrate that part i have taken i have defined the footer as a subtotal here and i'll be able to extract the balance due also which is actually bottom on 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 below of that footer okay. so in this I, I do have this will be like okay um, i'll just add one md here and flexi layout alternative so this is another way where you will be able to add multiple layouts to the single output so why are we going to use this concept is like okay now i know i do have two receivers basically my in, there are two invoice generators and i want the output in the same layout in the as single output from both the vendors and both the vendors has the different structure of their invoices in that case i can add these alternative layouts and i can choose as many as i want and this will be an empty one and as soon as you start with your new project your search element section looks like this and for the same thing i just went right click add element and i have added a static text as an invoice i just took it as invoice and just added as one so what is this number of hypothesis is whenever i am extract i'm doing the extraction there might be a chance in the tree of hypothesis the nodes of the tree might be more than one so for why what is that is i'm just going to explain so for that let me disable this and run this component and if you just look at this this is my tree of hypothesis where you will be able to see just one node for each and every group what i'm going to extract or for each and every element which i have extracted you will be able to see just one node but for example here i have a invoice and here also i have a invoice and there might be a chance here also i do have a invoice and i'm extracting just as a invoice giving more than five and i'm not defining any of the relations basically i'm not saying from where it has to pick so there might be a chances where am is going to pick it from more than one node so there might be a chances where this invoice this invoice and this all three of the instance of the invoices might be extracted and giving me this instead of one that might give it three nodes and in that case definitely whatever the elements which we have defined with respect to the relations with respect to this specific invoice number will vary based on the first node which has been identified on the page so that's the reason it's a best practice and if we want to if we want to know we have to extract only one specific element from the page we are going to just mention that the number of surviving hypothesis is one and we do have this name and this name is not going to take any of the spaces into the consideration and then this is just the full name if you want to add any comment with respect to this field you will be able to add it here and we do have this optional element required element and the prohibited element this is nothing but the optional element is nothing but i'm just saying that the element which i'm searching for the static element or the element which i'm trying to extract it might be there or it might not be there so do not show me an exception even if that element is not found if that is i'll be making it as an optional and the required element why are we going to use the required element is because when i'm processing the invoices from multiple vendors 
So now I want to know that it should be an invoice, first of all. And the second one, I must know that it, it is coming from that specific vendor. So I will be able to define a static text as a vendor name and also the keyword as the invoices in the required element and the prohibited element the prohibited element if i choose this as a prohibited element so whenever it is finding whenever abby is finding that specific text in the document it is going it is not going to consider that page for the process that is about the optional element required element and the prohibited element we do have in this and then we do have the static text it is just we're going to define what is the specific static text we want to extract and there are a couple of uh, properties so we will be looking on all of these things in detail in our upcoming sessions and then i can i'll be able to define the regions and if i know if i already i know one required element which is found in the document i'll be able to add the relations with respect to that specific required element for to extract any of the values so in the same way i have just added header footer, and then i have extracted a couple of the static text it is just a structured way which I'm, which I just followed as a static test and the values just the grouping purpose. So you, you even if you just go ahead, right click, add element, and you will be able to extract any of the values over here. So here, uh, let me see how to extract a static text and how to extract the values. So in the static text, I'm just going to add element, click on the static text. So here now I want to extract what is the quality and the amount. So for that, I'm just going to add one of this. So I'm going to define quality and I'll change the number of hypothesis to the one and in the static quality header. I just go here and I'll use quality. Sorry, it's just a quantity. Quantity and in the relation now I know where exactly the quality is and I already found a couple of the elements around it so I just have to define where it is exactly there so I'm just going to add below of the bottom of this due date and click on OK add relation so if you just look at this as soon as I define the relation though it is able to show me and it is highlighting where exactly I'm searching so I think uh, there are a couple of people where they they are confused how I'm getting this if you want to get this only what you have to make sure is here in the drop down you just make sure you have selected all and you just have to process it or after each and every element has been created right so and then i'm just going to keep another relation above of the bottom bottom above of the top of the subtotal so subtotal has been defined in the footer i'm just taking it as a footer i will add relation and when i click on this i'm going to get that and i'll show you guys how it's going to reflect and now i'm just defining it should be there in only this search area not anywhere so I'm just defining above the bottom of this unit price with minus 25 and I'll use the same relation and change to the below of the top and I'll say so if I just select all of them together if you just identified this has been filled out so now Abby is looking for the grayed out searching element for this. So now I know it is in the right side of the unit price. So I'm just going to add in, uh, add in that also. Like right of the right of the unit price. Add, add, add. Okay. So if you just look at this. I'm able to extract the quantity and this is my search area for the quantity which I'm searching for. This is how you can just go ahead and extract all the static elements which is there in the whole page. 
And now, if you just look at this, I just extracted a couple of the static elements, and I'll show you guys how to extract the values. When I have extracted all the static elements, how can I extract the values? Is in the values, I'm just going to create one element, add element, and then I'm going to create one character string as a subtotal value. And I'll just make this as one. And here, there are multiple ways to give the input for the character string. When I'm extracting the value and I know exactly the pattern of that specific value, I can go with the regular expression. And if I don't know what exactly where the value comes, it might be a numbers, it might be a alphanumerics, or it might be a alphabets. In that case, I can just go here and add all the alphabets over here, all set, or if you know exactly what is there is going to come. For example, I'm, I'm extracting what is the gender of that person. And that gender has been just, it, it's a text format. And I know the value should be always either M or F, or it is just a male and female. It is going to uh, identify, it is just going to present as a MRF. In those cases, please do not select all these things. And you know what is exactly the expected value, just please mention only those values when you are sure about what you are expecting from the uh, page or the image which you are processing. So in the same way, I just have to create a relation that I'm just going to define it right of the right of the subtotal. I'm just going to take the static and the okay, subtotal is in the footer. So I'm just going to take this and add relation. I'm just copying and pasting the same thing and I'm defining the above or uh, above on the below with respect to the subtotal itself. Okay. And I'm minus 25 add changes, and I'm just going to add the same thing below the top of minus 25. Save changes, apply, okay, control save, and I do control E. And if I just click on the subtotal, I'm able to get the subtotal value. And now I have extracted a couple of the outputs. So, how can I get this output to the or uh, to the database or to an Excel piece. In the blocks, I just have to go ahead and create the block. So I do have a couple of blocks which I have already created, but when you are creating a new element or new project, none of the blocks will be available. So it will be just an empty. You just have to go ahead and create the block for all the values which you want to export. Right, so I'm just going to disable this, which I don't want now. So now I have created the subtotal. I'm going to add that as a text. So here also we do have the table, repeating group, and the check boxes and all these things. So I'm just going to take this as a text. In the text, I'm going to add a subtotal. And in the subtotal, I know this is my layout, and then I'll be able to map this as a subtotal value. So what happens when I'm going to add an alternative flexi layouts, that is nothing but how I can deal with a multiple layouts is, as soon as I add a alternative layouts, I'll be able to save, get all of them in this dropdown. So you can just choose that specific layout for which you want to map, and you will be able to map those values over here. So I'm just going to click on apply and okay, and my project has been saved. So now I'm just going to export this and here I'm just going to train. And if you just look at this, this is an ample file. I'll be able to save it. Do not create. Okay. And I'll be able to open project setup station or it is also called an administrator station. So we do have both of these things. Uh, I mean, the same component has been named as administration station and also a project setup station both are one and the same so i'm just going to create the new one so i'm just going to pick this option project properties i'm just taking the path okay here is my path control c and i'm just going to create the same path control a control v in this I'm going to create a admin project, create admin. 
and I'm going to create this. And in the project, click on the document definition and create a new. And when you're creating a new, you just have to load a sample and as well as uh, this one. So for that, I'll just go back and check the train. So this is a sample which I have picked. I have picked that sample and I have to load the flexi layout. That is nothing but the AFL file which I have just chosen. So I go here and I've taken this train. Next. So here I'll be having an option whether I want to add an ICR component also or if I just want to go for an OCR. You can choose any of these things over here and if you can click on the finish. And in the finish, as soon as you've done this, so if you just look at this, we have seen we have got only the elements which has been created as a block, nothing more than that. And once I'm done with all these things, and I'm just going to close it. The document definition. So I'm just going to close this, and I do have this. You just have to click on the publish. Yes. So once I'm done with this, as soon as I load one batch in the test batch i'm going to add one of the sample so i'm just going to pick this so if you just look at this the background mode i'm not doing anything i just put the file in the administration station and the administration station itself has been picked up and it is also already identified and this is the confidence level which i got and when i click on this and double click i'll be able to see what is the value which has been extracted and if you want to export this data either if it is manually you can just right click and export to i'm just showing this for the uh, demo purpose so here i'm just going to give it as a train sample and click on export right this is done let's see so here i do have this uh, train sample i just have to pick this to the out of my server there are multiple ways this i just exported the data to the excel but i do i also have the option to export the data to the database and how to pick it from the ui path and how we can import the files from the hot folder how we can use the image pre-processing and how can we write a script for each and every pill which has been extracted everything we will be able to see it in in our upcoming trainings but this is a very which has been processed where i have created a single element one uh, characteristic that is nothing but the value uh, which we will be deep dive and see how to extract the value from the tables how to extract the value from the table using the repeating group and, and other components like a check boxes and other options in the flexi layout studio and also how to write a custom code for each and every element which has been extracted in our upcoming uh, sessions so now i do have this uh, exported data in a excel which can be configured in the sql which will be 100 percent automation like as soon as you put the file into the hot folder, it will pick it from the hot folder, process it, and push the data to the database. And our UiPath bots will be able to pick that data from the database and process it automatically. So which we will be, uh, you know, considering and see those uh, options in our ne next upcoming sessions. So that's all for today and thank you everyone if you have any questions you can just go ahead and post in your comments and i'm here to answer those questions um yes abby is a licensed one we have to take a license for the abby and uh, that depends on uh like there are two types of licenses one you go with the per page license second one which goes with a year uh like maybe you've taken a license for the whole year and you will be able to get any number of uh, pages for that specific year or it's going to like okay i'm going to purchase a license with respect to thousand pages or it i'm going to take the license for one lakh processes uh, pages uh it, it de depends on what kind of license you're going to get it
So any other questions? So are we good to end for the day? Uh, Diva, you have a question if you like to answer. The question is uh, mm -hmm. we, we can't really practice it like UI Path Community Edition. Uh, um, we do have, like, uh, yes, we can do that. For uh, every organization, they're going to give us a 30 uh, days of uh, licensing free. Like, uh, you will be able to access for the community edition, but which will be expiring in 30 days. Within 30 days, you will get around some thousand pages. You can just request for that from the and you will be able to uh, practice them. Okay, so, Bob, so I don't see any other questions now. So you can just leave. Thank you guys. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Divya. Thank you.